Oh my gosh, this is unreal. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California and not as south as San Diego. This has been unreal this year. I, I don't even know where to start. Where am I gonna put this one right now? Is this one full? You know what, I can change that one out. Let me tell you what's going on. Let me move this out of the way. I know, I, th I think I did a video a while back telling you they were gonna leave soon. Boy, was I wrong. They are not leaving. They are coming in by the thousands. I don't know what this is. Normally, this time of the year, in the beginning of April, they start to dwindle away. Now, I don't mean they go away. We end up with quite a few hundred that stay here, that breed and nest, um, forage, pollinate, do their thing, and then the rest go up north, different directions, I'm not sure. I have seen more Orioles this year than ever before in my life in one place. They come in by the dozens. We have two species that are here on the Orioles. We have the Hoodeds, and then we have what's called the Bullocks, a different color. They're absolutely gorgeous. They've been coming in both male and female. Isn't this a gorgeous day? Now, when it rains, I can't stand up because of this. Let me see if I can scoot down like that. When it rains, it even brings in more. So we had far more yesterday, but I just filled all this twice. There's on the window, I'm still filling those. They're all over the deck. They've got, there's some in the garden, these feeders. These are their favorite feeders. And my goodness, they keep coming in and, and just feeding. Now I'm putting out, not putting out, I am making at one time now, one and a half gallons of nectar. Now that is a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water. I do it differently. And, and this is white granulated sugar. Do not use anything else. No juice, no honey, no raw sugar. They can't process that. What they're getting out of this is sucrose, which is exactly the same thing or as close as we can manufacture that is coming out of flowers. Pollen we can't do. They can go get the pollen themselves out of flowers. But nectar runs out quickly. If it gets really hot, there may not be as much nectar. If the plants don't, just don't get enough water, which they're getting enough water, they may not have enough nectar. But the thing is, if a hummingbird comes in, or bees, bumblebees, other critters get in there, they suck all the nectar out. Some plants, some flowers, will make more nectar, and some will not. They're done. They had the pollinators come in there, collect the nectar. The nectar is nothing for the flower. What it is, is they want them to get the pollen on them, go to the next flower. Now, as they're putting their beak in there, they're passing the pollen from flower to flower, which develops the seed. So once they feel that everything's been done right, and again, each flower is different, each species and type of flower is different, they may end up getting all the nectar out of it, and that flower may only last for one day. Some flowers last for hours, and there are a few flowers that can last for a couple days. I put a cover on here for the rain. It's worked out fantastic. And for the sun, notice I'm in the shade. So I don't know if they're not getting enough. I don't know if they're the direction they need to go in because on the East Coast, there's a lot of bad weather right now. If, it, if they're stalling, we've had robins do that in the past. I can't tell you what's going on. I don't know. But if they don't leave, and I'm going through, my goodness, the other day it was 10 gallons. If they don't leave, and they decide to nest here. Can you imagine what's gonna happen when the babies start hatching and then the babies forage and then they go back to nest? So it wouldn't be right now, it would be more like June will have a set of babies already flying around and foraging. They're not gonna leave. They rarely take off, but some can. And then you'll have the parents back there nesting again because they can do three clutches a year. And that goes for the Orioles as well. So as far as the update, are they leaving? I'm gonna say they're not leaving to go to any, any uh, super blooms because they would have left already. The super blooms generally are the middle of March till the middle of April and we're already in the first week of April. They would have already left because that means they would leave now they would have a week or so out there to forage, and then they've got to leave when the blooms disappear, the flowers drop, and I don't know where they will go. The other thing bothering them is the Orioles. They do not like them, so I've been trying to train the Orioles to go 
to the back half and leave this and all this for the hummingbirds. Is it working? Of course not. <laughs> but I tried. I do have most of the orals behind me. And they will feed mainly in those, but they are venturing into these. The hummingbirds have been feeding in here. This worked out really good. I made this cover. Yes, I did, didn't I? And the Orioles don't like going underneath. It's too short for them. They're too big, but they can. I've seen it, but the hummingbirds go under here and they'll empty this one quickly. I'm gonna make another one for this one. And as far as the window, no. I had a oh, whole half a dozen to a dozen Orioles in there the other day in the window. And I generally run about six to eight feeders in there. So I will keep you up to date what is going on. I just ordered, uh, what did I order? 50 pounds of sugar yesterday. And then I ordered another batch that's being shipped in from Texas. And that is cane sugar. So I, I just keep ordering sugar from all over. And sugar went up another, by the 10 pounds, another dollar. It just went up within the past month. This is amazing. I want to continue to do this to help them out. Um, I can't leave. I wanted to go to the store and then Gary's not sure about how to make it and does he have the time? Will he be able to keep up with it? I do have my cameras on my phone so I can watch and tell him, oh, the feeders are low. You've got to go make the, you know, not make the food because I pre-make it for him, but go fill him and then he's got to stop what he's doing. So generally I'm here like 90% of, I am here 99% of the time. And that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, because I know hummingbirds are showing up at your place. A lot of you have told me that. That's wonderful. Feed them. Keep them. I'll send you some more. How many do you want? I will tell you something that I misspoke on once. And I was really pretty sure I had set a fountain up here last year, I think it was, and the year before, and they never touched it. So I said, keep your water fountains away from the hummingbirds feeders, the feeding station. Well, I will tell you now that that has not stopped them this year. Maybe because there's so many, there's always going to be some. They are now bathing in the fountain and coming to eat. Now, the thing is, they can go into the fountain and we have orange trees all through here. So they can, when they're wet, just dive into the orange tree, fluff up, clean their feathers and then come to forage. So you would want to have the fountain close to a bush or someplace, uh, I would say at least 10 feet, so they can get in there and dry off, though they dry off literally in seconds. This has been wonderful. This is a clothes rack, and I picked this up at Walmart. It was like $8, and I made a top for it. I've got a video for that, and then I covered it with some old garden flags. It's Christmas garden flags. And this has been great. This little rack that I got Dollar Tree, I covered it with the plastic that came with the flags. Then the flag went on top and it's just got these paper binders, the metal ones. You can get a big package for a dollar, Dollar Tree. And this holds it and they love it. All of them love it, even the Orioles, because they're not in the sunlight. And when it rains, everything stays nice because when it rains, the water will get inside the feeders. And when it gets inside the feeders, it will dilute it. Once it dilutes it, they won't drink it. So anyways, I wanted to give you an update. I do have a lot more flowers around here this year. Maybe that's attracting them. I, I don't know, but I really thought by now, especially April 1st, April Fool's to me, that they were gonna leave and they keep coming in. Every night, it seems like there's more and more. So as, as they're traveling through, they're coming here. Now maybe, Maybe more people used to put out feeders and they're not bothering. Maybe more people are traveling now because for years, we all know, a lot of us stayed home and put the feeders out for them. And that could have brought them here because there were so many feeders. Now the people are on vacation, so there's nobody to fill the feeders. And they're all coming here. I, I don't know. I, I, I have no answer for you what is making them park here. Though I have heard this has happened before in Texas, so some of you know about that, that they used to come across and go into Mexico. And now that they found there's so much food, they stay there and they don't go back. They don't migrate out. So anyways, that's what's going on. I will say that my orange trees are full of thousands of wonderful smelling blossoms. And that could be bringing them too, because they can see the flowers and they come in. And citrus has great nectar for them. So I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll keep you up to date how it goes. Normally all year, I go between two to three gallons a day. 
And now, like I said, the other day when it was raining, it was 10 gallons. I had never, never had to put out that much before. But then we've got other issues going because it seems to be other birds have been coming in and tasting it and figuring out they can get in here and get some food. So I'm going to keep going. I've got to go back to work. I've got to go do all those feeders down there. There's a few of those starting to empty. And as you can see, they're already empty. And I just filled this up uh, 45 minutes ago. I went through and did them all. So I'm going back to work. Everybody have a wonderful day. We have sun. I have never seen so much rain in my life in Southern California before. We just went through a big rainstorm and we've got another one coming in this weekend, which brings in more birds. So anyways, I love it and I hope you enjoyed this. And they are all over the place and they are just absolutely amazing to watch. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And we are growing a lot. Keep in mind, these are our pollinators for our vegetable plants as well. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, what do I need to change here? And I do take all the feeders in, wash them, and then put them out again. Nope, there's still food in there. Take this one in.